we haven't been able to, uh, to limit the warming so far and, uh, and we are still moving in the wrong, wrong direction. It's not often that the World Meteorological Organization makes the headlines, but last week they came out with a warning. There's a 66 percent chance that we would uh, exceed 1.5 degrees uh, during the coming, coming uh, five years. It's the first time in history that, more likely than not, the world will reach a 1.5 degree Celsius temperature increase above pre-industrial levels. And what's more, it'll happen in the next half decade. Estimated this uh, during the coming five years, we would hit uh, 1.5 uh, on, on temporary basis. But uh, during the coming 15 to 20 years, we estimated that might be more the permanent uh, permanent feature of uh, of climate. You've likely heard of 1.5 degrees in the context of the fight against climate change, and it's an important target. We must keep the goal of 1.5 degrees Celsius alive. Putting a price on pollution is the most efficient and powerful way uh, to keep 1.5 alive. We can keep the goal of limiting global warming to just 1.5 degrees Celsius within our reach if we come together. It was a key element in the climate talks in 2015. The Paris Agreement, it was a big deal the first legally binding international treaty on climate change. And one of its main goals was to limit the increase in global average temperature to well below two degrees above pre-industrial levels and pursuing efforts to limit the temperature increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Climate change experts have long maintained that keeping to 1.5 degrees of warming is crucial. Limiting global warming to 1.5 compared to 2 degrees would reduce the number of people exposed to climate-related risks and susceptible to poverty by up to several hundred millions by 2050. Limiting warming to 1.5 degrees C implies changes on an unprecedented scale. It means deep emission reductions in all sectors, the use of a wide range of technologies, behaviour changes, and a significant increase of investment in low-carbon options. But the big concern is that once we pass that point, there's no turning back. Uh, some scientists would tell you we've already blown past it. Uh, others will suggest that uh, we're within the capacity to keep it alive as a target, but that we are uh, in a place where we may shoot past it, but come back to it because of the technologies and uh, other capacities we have to deploy clean energy. I personally find that a very frightening prospect because human nature being what it is, once you shoot past it, I think it's gonna be very difficult. This year's UN climate conference is supposed to do a global stock take to see you know, how far the world has come on those Paris goals. And with reports like this one from the World Meteorological Organization, the situation doesn't look great. But what does hitting that 1.5 degree threshold look like? And what does it mean for Canadians? For more on this, we've got CBC meteorologist Christy kleiman Haga. Hi, Christy. Hi, Lauren. So can you give us a sense of, you know, what that 1.5 degrees Celsius looks like across the country? Well, the interesting thing about Canada is the 1.5 annual average temperature isn't actually a 1.5 here. We've already surpassed 1.5 because northern latitudes are warming at a faster rate than the rest of the world. So a 1.5 globally means even more heat um, in areas of Canada. So what that means is that's kind of the benchmark for more permafrost melts, more um, active weather, more extreme weather, uh, the increased risk of drought, increased risk of uh, flooding at the same time, which, which is uh, hard to believe. But uh, it really just bumps up all of those catastrophic risks we see associated with climate change even higher. That risk really elevates once you get past that um, global annual temperature of 1.5. So that's the benchmark and why that benchmark is there. And I guess that's kind of why we're seeing this prediction of the hottest summer on record, right? 
Yeah, so it's 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 hard to say if it'll be this summer, if it'll be next summer, but what we're seeing over the next five years is uh, the potential for our hottest year on record hitting at some point between now and 2027. So um, what we're seeing is, you know, bumping above that 1.5 threshold annually at least once. Now, it doesn't mean that that's we've surpassed the threshold completely. We're not going to stay there. Uh, by uh, it, it doesn't really mean that we've completely uh, lost that, that goal that we have of staying under 1.5, but we could see a swing upwards uh, just above it. So uh, that, again, will mean a very hot year. And on hot years, you do see more extreme weather. So it is something to keep in mind. Uh, once you look at our annual temperatures, our temperature charts, we've probably all, see the, all, all seen them where they have those undulating lines of warmer year, cooler year, warmer year, cooler year. As we get closer to that 1.5 threshold on an average basis, you're going to see more bump ups. And so this is what we're kind of seeing, that risk of bumping above that 1.5 degree threshold at least once. Wow. And so what does that mean for agreements like the Paris Agreement? Well, it may seem that we've kind of missed the mark on the Paris Agreement, which isn't really the case. When we are dealing with climate records and climate data, you have to look at very long time scales, not just one year. So uh, bumping above one year, although will drive extreme weather for that year, so it is something to keep note of, it is, it is just one year, right, in the grand scheme of things. If we start to get above that threshold more consistently, um, you know, 10, 20 years, then we'll have seen that Paris agreement threshold breached. Um, but when you look at that line, as we get closer to that 1.5, you are going to see it bump above a couple more times it, it get more frequently as you approach that 1.5. So it is something to watch. It is a kind of an alarm bell that we are getting close, but it doesn't mean that it's too late. OK, so then there's still hope. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it really just it brings in that timing question of this tomorrow problem that seems like it's so far away it is getting closer. And though, um, you know, the World Meteorological Organization predicts we will be closer to that threshold of 1.5 more consistently in about 10 years, it means that we are getting very close and we are going to have these hotter years, especially when we have an El Nino situation developing, which looks likely at, at least through the end of the summer, if not fall. So, it is something to keep in mind, but it doesn't mean that it's over and that we should give up on climate mitigation because there is still time. Okay. Christy Kleiman Haga, thank you so much. You're welcome. That's it for us today on About That. I'm Lauren Bird. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.